This is Heike from Horse Road Connect, and today I'm going to be talking to Carolyn Fitzpatrick from the Horse Connection. Hi, Carolyn. How, how are you today? Hi, I'm great. Excellent. Could you just tell us real quick what your background is with horses? Well, I pretty much had horses that I was responsible for since I was a pretty young child. My dad had a horse accident when he was 17 that left him with some challenging like health concerns. So he dug his feet into the ground the first few years of my life, not wanting me to have a horse. But he finally gave in, and he purchased this beautiful, athletic, two-year-old filly that taught my dad and myself many lessons of things not to do. <laughs> my oh, dad's yeah. intentions were that I would have a horse, but um, it wouldn't be one that would be easy to be around, hoping that I would give up the passion, but that backfired on him, obviously. So as the years progressed, I was with hundreds of horses and read and read and took horse lessons, and I've become quite an accomplished horse person. Um, I've owned a full-service equine barn, I had more than 60 horses to care for daily. I owned three stallions and service mares and gave lessons weekly and was actually involved in quite a few breeds and disciplines. So my background's given me lots of experience with multiple breeds and genders and age levels. Wow, that's fantastic. So, so what is um, the Horse Connection all about? The Horse Connection's actually divided into like two tracks. And they support each other. They're not separate, but I'm going to describe the first track, and that's equine gestalt coaching. I am a Touch by a Horse certified practitioner, and equine gestalt coaching is a method that was developed by Melissa Pierce, and the coach has a second coach, and that's the horse. And the two together move the client to where they desire to be in life. Obviously, horses don't understand the words the clients speak, but they instinctively know where their client is speaking the truth or not the truth by the energies. And the horse's reaction to those responses helps the human coach know what to ask the client next so they can go further in the client's discovery process. So that's one thing I offer. And then the second track is more horse-human related, and I call that the trust-based equine partnership. And it's a methodology that I came up with that encompasses like natural horsemanship principles whereby the partnership between the owner and the horse become deeper and deeper. Um, It's all based on trust. Everything has to be trust first before any steps go further. And the method takes into account the horse's personality preferences so that we can learn to speak the human's language more and realize what their preferences are as they go through life instead of expecting the horse to always adapt and adjust to what we do in life and want in life. Tell me just a little bit more about the horse personality preference. I co-authored a book. It's titled Equisology, Deciphering the Human Horse Typology. And that book goes deeply into a human and horse personality preferences. The first third of the book is about human personalities. It's similar to Myers-Briggs. And then the two-thirds, the last part of the book, is strictly on the horse, and it's exercises you do with your horse at liberty to determine what are the horse's preferences, not based on what we're asking them to do, but what they would do naturally if we weren't in their environment. Okay, cool. So um, when a client comes to you for, for coaching, um, mm-hmm. either you know, for their own personal coaching or the trust-based equine partnership coaching, do they bring horses with them or do you have horses available for them to uh, work with? Well, the equine gestalt coaching, the true coaching part, um, they do not bring a horse. I use my horses as my co-coach. I know what their symptoms are, their reactions are based on certain things clients do, so I can read them quicker. It takes a while to learn to have a horse as your co-coach, and it And honestly, the client gets a whole lot more from it if it's not their horse because they see their horse in a light that there's already um, a predisposed notion of what their horse is going to do or not do. So they're too focused on their horse, and it Mm -hmm. works better if I provide the horse for that.
Now on the trust-based equine partnership methods, it's by far preferred they bring their own horse because we're working with their partnership. Mm-hmm. So you do your coaching and the um, trust-based equine partnership. Do you do mm-hmm. that only in person or do you, because I, I know that at Horse World Connect we have subscribers from around the world. Um, do you ever do any video coaching or Skype calls or is it all in person? No, I can do any of the above. I've got a couple of clients right now that live like in Washington State. It makes no sense to try to get a horse to Virginia. So they send me little video clips and we work that way. We do weekly coach sessions. And as far as the equine gestalt coaching, I mean, I can do the coaching aspect of it from anywhere, but they would be missing the horse component. Right, right, absolutely. That makes sense. Um, So what challenges do people who seek your service have? Is there, is there, you know, a handful of specific challenges that they have where they go, oh, well, so here's a couple of questions actually. What are the challenges that they have and how do, how do they know to reach out to you? Well, with a trust-based equine partnership, I would say the number one challenge that keeps resurfacing, I'm not advertising for this particular client, but it seems to be that it's uh, working with individuals that have developed a fear for riding. And this rips at them in many ways because they've internalized riding as part of their identity or they love being around their horse, but now they fear riding and that's taken away part of their joy of having the horse in their life. So I would say 50% or greater of those that work with me on the trust-based equine partnership have reached out initially because they have a fear of riding now. That could be from a bad accident. It could be just from a perceived something. It could be from something totally non-related to horses. I forgot what the other part of the question was. I was so into that. Yeah. How do they find out about, about you? How do they know to reach out to you? Well, that's probably one of the best kept secrets out there, and I don't want it to be a best kept secret, <laughs> but getting their word out to those that are looking for my services is really difficult. I know it's all about marketing or being at the right place at the right time, but with the equine gestalt coaching, it's difficult for me to describe the service because in order to really understand the benefits of it, they almost have to be part of that experience. And then they realize how it transforms their life. But most of my clients have come as referrals from people that have been coached where you know, I really wish that I could reach out to many, many others and they could experience the benefits. And then as far as the challenging on the trust-based equine partnership, it's just there are so many horsemanship programs available to people that choosing the correct one or the one that could help them the most becomes overwhelming and almost a blur. So a lot of times that's also a referral of someone that's been at one of my two-day clinics or they've worked with me on -on one-on-one coaching. Yeah, that makes sense, and that's what we're trying to help you with, right, is to get the word out about what you do to more people. I'm just going to put in there that um, the, for the person listening, you know, if you go to the, our Facebook page at Horse World Connect, you can actually read some of Carolyn's blogs, which are really great. If you had three wishes for the horse world, what would they be? Well, I'm not really going to say these are prioritized like first, second, third, but I'll just give you three Mm -hmm. wishes. I would say that horse owners would become more invested in understanding their horse's unique personalities, that they're not all cookie cutter like each other. They don't respond as quickly to the same training methods or even the same riding methods. And I really, really hope people will embrace the fact that they are unique personalities. Mm -hmm. I would say second would be... um, that more the younger generation would discover a passion for horses, which would place them in contact with nature and the beauty of the horse instead of being electronically and indoor bound. Number three, that senior horses would maybe be viewed as the best teachers for human wisdom. They have a lot to give us after they no longer can serve our needs as the riding horse, and I think they deserve forever homes where they can be appreciated for what they still have to share. Oh, I love that one too. Gosh, thank you for that. What do you want horse people to remember about you and the horse connection? That my love for God and horses is real. 
and that I desire to share any knowledge that I have with others so their life can be transformed into whatever they dream of living. Do you have any words of wisdom, any quotes that you like, or just words of wisdom that you'd like to share with a person listening to this interview? thinking now that people that would be listening to this, that this might be relevant. I don't know. When I look back on what shaped me as a person, I realized that I was often placed in an uncomfortable situation, a situation that I didn't want to be in and one that I hadn't chosen. But in all the ones that turned out really well, I chose to take higher ground and find a solution. I don't look at those times as challenging times anymore. When I look back at them, I look at them as experiences that gave me growth opportunities. So I would say my words of wisdom would be that major change is definitely possible, but it often takes a lot of work. And instead of viewing the work as a negative, view it as a growth opportunity. Yes, now I know why people flock to you as a coach. That was awesome. Um, anything else that you want to tell the person listening about yourself or your business, the Horse Connection, or the two tracks that you offer to people and horses? I know we have a brief interview, so I don't want to get <laughs> too heavy in any particular thing, but I, I guess I would just have a couple of things to say, and that is that in the Gestalt, equine gestalt coaching, an individual can be struggling with any unmade decision or struggling with a change in their life. It might be like overcoming grief of the loss of somebody dear to them, human or animal, or it could be retiring and not just knowing what to do next, or, or it might be they're unsure about what changes they need to make to even feel good about themselves. I mean, to me, equine gestalt coaching works for everybody, and it's not like a negative perception that they need coaching. It's saying, in my mind, it's like I want to be, I want a major change, and I want something big to happen in my life. And you just use a coach as a tool to reach whatever that is. And anybody listening can learn more about any of my services, whether it's equine gestalt coaching or the trust-based partnership or whatever I do in any of those, by just visiting my website at thehorseconnectionllc.com. Or they can call me to discuss what they're seeking to see if my services are even a good choice for them. I offer a 30-minute free exploration session so people have an opportunity to ask any questions they have or see if they're comfortable working with me. And that's at absolutely no financial obligation to seek services or ever call again. Nice. Yep, and we have your um, phone number listed on the website, so that's easy to find. Where in Virginia are you located at, and where's the closest airport to you? In Amherst, Virginia, which is right in the middle between Lynchburg and Charlottesville. They could fly into Lynchburg. They could fly into Charlottesville. I'm like 35 minutes either direction from those. And many people that come to see me actually fly into Richmond, which is a much bigger hub, and they might eliminate a connection. That's about two hours and 15 minutes from me. Okay. Excellent. Thank I'm you in so the much. gorgeous Blue Ridge Mountains. Oh, awesome. Yes. Thank you very much, Carolyn, for this interview. I really appreciate it. And I hope that the person listening will look at your listing and will go to your website and maybe be interested in doing that 30-minute free exploratory session with you and find out more about you and how you can help them overcome any challenges that they're struggling with right now, be it with themselves or with their equine partner. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the interview time. 